term. So in alchemy, there are both inner and outer expressions of alchemical performance. Outer alchemy has to do with transmutation of metals, one metal into another metal. Also what you would describe as the blending of metals in particular ways and certain vital substances that are said to produce an elixir, a medicine that is multidimensional in its effect. It can heal, it can transform objects, it can create different types of phenomenon and manifestations with speed. Keep in mind that outer alchemy was regularly practiced in ancient times. Such substances were produced. Such substances were utilized in places like Atlantis. These substances were utilized even in the creation of certain structures. This allowed for the structures to possess certain powers. It allowed for the structures to resonate with the bodies, with the minds of those that would occupy the structures. So just as you have your aura as a type of energetic home, think of your aura plugging into your home. And your home in that way becomes an extension of yourself and your body. This type of technology and more. So in terms of inner alchemy, what would oftentimes take place is the various dimensions of self would be categorized as various elements and various forces and various powers. These forces and powers would then be purified. They would then be re-energized. They would then be reconfigured within the body in a way that would allow for alchemical phenomenon to occur within the body. An alchemical phenomenon is specifically a phenomenon where opposites are unified. Light and dark, male, female, higher, lower. When these types of forces are brought together and they are overlapped upon one another, this is when, in terms of your numerology and your cosmology, this is when the two return to the one. Simultaneously, when the two return to the one, a three is created because you have a vesica Pisces. So a three is created. That three is the almond sliver between the two spheres of the vesica Pisces, the two circles. It is that center point that represents the doorway into the one. So in the one, you have a three. When the one is observed from the perspective of the vesica Pisces. There are many different geometric depictions that have been used to talk about the one, even the circle itself. A lone circle has been described as a symbol for the one. A circle with a dot in the center has also been used to describe the one. So there are many depictions of it. Each one revealing a different facet of what you would describe as the Trinity. Within the one, in that sense, you have three layers. You have three levels. Every dimension is explored in the alchemical path because your chakras, one by one by one, become active. The chakras are correspondent with certain dimensions, with certain beings, certain powers. And as you bring what you might refer to as kundalini energy, up the center channel, and as you gradually activate these centers, more of your true self is revealed to you. The true self is revealed in a few ways. You become aware of both your strengths and your weaknesses. You see yourself objectively. The activation of the energy center creates a portal where the weaknesses can actually be automatically transformed through the alchemical power being generated. The strengths can be amplified can be crystallized, can be focused. What is needed in one's outer life during this time is an active diminishment of the weaknesses and an active cultivation of the strengths. And as that is perfected inwardly and outwardly, the energy center stabilizes and the next one begins to activate. And in alchemy, you have what you might describe as the perfection of the self as the end result. And because the inside reflects the outside, what ends up occurring is your outer reality begins to mirror that perfection you create inside yourself. And in that way, you create heaven on earth. Alchemy is the union of nature with the cosmos. Do keep this in mind. 
It is very naturalistic. Many people may hear alchemy and they think of something from the Renaissance. If you truly understood alchemical practices, you would find parallels between the processes the alchemist goes through and certain practices that are done in the Amazon jungle that specifically involve what are called dietas, where a type of fast is done, where only one herb is consumed, one plant. This becomes the shaman's mentor. The shaman learns the secrets of nature, the secrets of alchemy from this herb, from this plant. This is the same in which you would find in Renaissance alchemical areas. You would see the same type of behavior. So do keep in mind that Many of these indigenous groups relevant to your South Americas, many of them have connections to Lumurian groups. The Lumurian groups were the potion masters. The Atlanteans perfected the potions. They took them into new levels, to new heights, applied them in ways that really were unparalleled when you compare what the rest of the world was exploring in terms of that field of magical liquids and potions. So, as you know, your ayahuasca is like this, a magical potion, a magical liquid. It is, in many ways, an alchemical substance. It is considered to be a brew of death, yet it is a brew that reminds many people they are alive. Its connections are solar. It is a medicine of the heart which is a symbol of life. So it is alchemical in that respect. It reveals the powers of life and death. Of course, the same process can be explored through meditational alchemical paths. Do keep this in mind. So there are different paths for different people. To really take the alchemical path seriously, one must not just read about it. One must actively practice it must find a formula, must find a way, must find a method, and must stick to the method. And it will challenge them. Many people on the alchemical path at a certain point remove themselves from society. What is also needed on that path is the discernment of when to lean into society, when to withdraw from society. In that way, the alchemical path is similar to the tarot card, the hermit. But the hermit also is seen as a shadowy card. It can reflect treachery, secret plots. This is because in excess isolation, a person, if they are imbalanced, can end up, through their disconnection with society, creating false enemies in their mind. Too much isolation can make even the most evolved of people into beasts. So there is a type of warning that is given on the alchemical path. Know when to transcend the hermetic phase. So it is because, specifically, one's sensitivities will increase. Food will be stronger. Drink will be stronger. People will be stronger. You become more aware of the energetic level of things. So it can be useful. It can expose what is weak in your energy when you brush up against those amplified sensations. So the alchemical path is a wise path to take. It is not the only spiritual path of ascension, but it is one of the most effective ones and one of the most, you could say, accelerated ones. Yet one is encouraged to really take their time simultaneously. 